Hey everybody, I hope you're ready because it's a hot one today. And I'm not talking hyperbole, it's literally very hot here in New Jersey. My dashboard says it's 98 degrees, but um, I could tell you when you're outside and you're in the sun, it's at least 150. In fact, right across from me, there's a tree. And about five minutes ago, I saw a bird laying an egg, which I've never actually seen before. It was like National Geographic. And as the egg came out, it cracked open and the egg was perfectly scrambled. And to boot, once it was out, the bird was perfectly cooked. It was succulent and delicious, uh, magnificent. Anyway, as I'm saying, it's a hot day. Uh, but we're not talking about the weather today. Uh, I am here in the Judy Dench parking lot, uh, waiting for my wife. My son, MT, he's in the back there. Oh, is he waking up? He might be waking up. But uh, I wanted to tell you about a conversation I had last night with an independent comic book writer, creator, and co-founder of Legacy Comics, Patrick Hickey Jr. Patrick and I spoke in length uh, about the company he co-founded, Legacy Comics, a number of projects that he's worked on outside of comics, such as video games and books, and of course the comics that he's written, uh, wrote rather, including The Job and Conjury, which you're gonna hear a lot about today. Uh, I do wanna tell you this episode is longer than I typically record for, typically longer than my usual shows are rather, uh, but I want you to hang into the end because it's well worth it. And uh, at the end of this video, you're also gonna have an opportunity to actually win some comics on me. Uh, so with that, I don't wanna delay this any further. Let's go ahead and get to the interview. Joining me today is co-founder of Legacy Comics and creator of Condry, among many other projects, of course, uh, Pat Hickey Jr. Pat, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for uh, having me. It means a lot. Oh, thank you for joining me, joining us here. Uh, right off the bat, I have to ask, tell me if I leave anything out. You're sure. a college professor, an author, you've written many books, not not just one or two like we're talking yeah seven <laughs> seven yeah um voiceovers for video games yes um, very cool <laughs> ring no announcer <laughs> mm -hmm. um comic book writer and, and you, you've got uh your family man as well you have kids when yeah, do you two sleep? kids <laughs> i don't um, I'm exhausted right now. I am totally exhausted. Like I, I just posted a meme to my Instagram of like William Shatner smacking himself in the face. And it's just like, I literally just had a cold burrito like 10 minutes ago and took a big sip of like pink lemonade. And I'm like, let's, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, if you've got dreams, you've got to like not sleep to make them happen. So that's uh, that's been my mantra for I would say probably I'm 38 now so probably for about 20 years I've been doing it like this so so yeah well that's good and, and you know that hustle shows in your work especially when I go to the legacy comics website which um, if nobody's realized and I've got it kind of scrolling at the bottom of the screen here uh, and I encourage you to go ahead and visit that site and check it out of course um, hustle is is the big word there you've got it looks like a different posting every day, a different work yep. in progress. So it's not just saying, yeah. hey, here's this big flashy comic that I, I want you to look at. It's here's the process. Come join me and come along on this. Sure. And uh, it's so funny because it's like um, John Svedesi, my uh, co-founder, he designed the website, but I update it every day. Um and then uh, he does all of our podcasts, but I promote all of the social media. So it's just like neither one of us are ever sleeping ever you know like it's ridiculous like i talked to like one of one of my artists is in europe right now on vacation and like we were he was two hours early at the airport yesterday and we were talking about like the next comic for like two hours before he got on the plane like we are constantly in discussions with our with our team so it's mm -hmm. it's pretty wild it's pretty crazy tell me um tell me about how did legacy comics come about so I originally, um, I've been a college professor for 16 years. I've been uh, writing books on video game history for about about five years. I just finished my seventh book about a month ago. 
Um, my fifth book is coming out in like two weeks. So I have two other manuscripts that are done that I'm waiting for them to come out. Um, but I write books about video game history. So I interview video game developers and they tell me the behind the scenes stories of the games. Lots of fun. Very different from comic books. Um, and what happened was um, I wrote Condry um, when I was 18 um, before I started college. And I could never find an artist for it. And I probably showed it over the past like 20 years i've probably showed it to about a dozen people and they were all like this story is awesome you need to find an artist and i went through like three or four artists like one of them had Condry looking like cloud strife from final fantasy 7 and like it was just like oh my god i'm never going to find an artist and then um in august of 2019 i found kieran x quinn through a mutual friend and uh he nailed that sin city uh the max daredevil kind of look that i was going for like i call Condry like dirty brooklyn noir and it's like that's what i wanted and um he nailed it and uh i would say a couple of months later he finished um around december we finished an ash can together like a six page intro proof of concept story character building um and then around january february we started pitching to dark horse image and stuff and what happened in march of 2020 <laughs> so you know uh covid basically killed like our pitch because a lot of these companies weren't accepting like new pitches from like and that's the thing that kind of sucks i've been a college professor for super long i've got books in harvard yale stanford you know tons of colleges but it's just like when a comic book company looks at you they're like but you've never written fiction you've never written a comic before and it's a completely different beast so it's like it sucks. So yeah. I was just like, oh. So then what ended up happening was my Instagram, I get really good traffic on my Instagram because of all the stupid stuff and fun stuff that I do. And uh, Mark Bernal from Lesser Known Comics messaged me. And he was like, oh, would you like to interview me? Because I also also own an entertainment website called reviewfix.com, which has been around for about 13 years. Got over 24,000 articles in it. I've interviewed like Channing Tatum, Philip Seymour Hoffman, The Ultimate Warrior, um, Garth Ennis. I've interviewed so many amazing people. Joe Quesada, um, Jeff Loeb, I've, I've, uh, Chris Claremont. I've interviewed them all on Review Fix. So Mark reaches out to me and is like, can you interview me? I just started this comic book company, blah, blah, blah. blah. So I'm like, sure, we do an interview, gets good traffic, um, send him the link. And after he's like, if there's ever anything that I can do for you, I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. That's what I do. Like what you're doing right now, you know, it's what I do too. like interview indie people and stuff and like people that you think they're doing cool stuff because you want to be a part of like the foundation and stuff. And be like I knew them when blah, blah, blah. Like that's what we do. Um, so I was like, no, nah, we're good. And then like right after I said it, I was just like, send him Condry. <laughs> so I did. And then, like, 20 minutes later, he's like, yeah, we have to sign you to a contract. Like, yeah. we have to sign you and Con you, you and Kieran. So we ended up doing Condry 0, 1, 2, and 3 with lesser-known comics, the print versions. And uh, it was like, after every issue, I was just like, this is great. It's coming out. I'm super happy. But, 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 but. And then there's, like, five or six buts, and I'm just like, you have editorial experience. I was, I was an editor at NBC for two and a half years. I covered two Olympics. I covered three seasons of Saturday Night Live. I covered a presidential election. I covered the Trayvon Martin murder case. I covered Whitney Houston's death. I mean, so I'm like, I, I'm used to managing teams. I'm used to managing people. So I'm just like, what if I did, what if I started my own comic book company? I'm not an artist. John Spadesi is. Um, lives three blocks away from me. I know him forever. So it's like, John, what do you think? And we sat down in his basement for like three months and um, we just planned out a business plan. And um, the last thing that I was supposed to do for Lesser Known was like a Halloween edition of Condry. Mm -hmm. Came out on Halloween. And two days later, because um, I was working without a contract, which I'm not a fan of, and I don't suggest anyone ever does that, my contract had run out and um, I just waited to see if I would be extended like a new contract and stuff because I told him I was like, listen, I married an Italian woman and um, men that are married to Italian women do not work without contracts because your wife will be like, excuse me, you know, like good faith, you know, doesn't doesn't go far in those types of situations. So um, I was never extended another contract. I was expected to work on good faith, which is fine because everyone else was blah, 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 blah. 
But um, I made sure that I did everything that I said that I was going to do. And I called up Mark and said, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Um, the next day, we launched Legacy. And then two days later, we launched the Kickstarter with no social media presence, no nothing. Like, we had no followers on Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. And um, we ended up getting funded in about three and a half hours. Um, we ended up getting 300% funded. We got local TV coverage. We got local newspaper coverage. And it was just basically because I have all this experience in editorial. And I know a lot of people. I called in every favor that I could possibly call in. And I'm like, I'm I'm probably only going to start a comic book company once. So let's do it right, you know? Um, so we got 300% funded. That paid for our initial run of books. It paid for most of our second run of books, which are coming out in like two weeks. Um, and it really like kind of set us up for our first year. Um, so that's kind of how... That's how legacy started. Well, I mean, what, what strikes me is interesting. So you, you, you've got this script when you were 18, by the way, were you saying Conjury's going to make a great comic or were you just like, I, I need to write this short story? No, it was, I mean, I was going through, um, it's funny because, uh, I talked to John about this all the time. John Spadesi. Um, he, he likes a lot of different artists, a lot of DC artists and me, I'm totally like a Brian Michael Bendis guy. Like, I love that, like, at one, I mean, at one time, I mean, I'm sure you know this better than anybody, that, like, Brian Michael Bendis was working on, like, four or five series at the same time. Like, oh, my God. He's, like, one of the most prolific comic book writers ever. You know, Jeff Johns is another guy that I just think of, like, oh, my God, like, what can't he do? You know? Um, Donny Cates is a guy now that I look at that just, like, can do anything, you know? Um, so I've always wanted to be, like, that guy, like from a writing point of view. Um, and I just saw Condry as an 18 year old as this like really cool story that I could like bridge out into something else. And I was going through like, yeah, very much an image comics, like Sam and Twitch, Brian Michael Bendis, Daredevil, um, really crappy sci-fi B-movie stage of my life. And I just like mixed it all together. And um, it's so funny. I ended up showing my first journalism professor, um, Condry. And he was basically like, oh, it's pretty good. And like gave me like really like <laughs> vague like critique. And it's funny now because now I teach the class that he taught me at the college that I went to. And I'm I'm the head of that program at that college now. And and my comics out. So it's like it took 20 years, but it came like all f full circle because like I never gave up like on the story. I always knew that it was a comic, that it could be a good comic. I just needed to find the right artist and then I just needed to find like one person and it was Mark Burnell in the beginning, you know, to, to trust me and to, cause I didn't want to self publish, you know, I could have easily self published, but it's like, I didn't want to. And then even now, just like I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, joking around and they're like, well, you're kind of self publishing. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, we have an LLC. Like, we pay taxes. Like, we're a legit company. It's like telling Stan Lee, oh, you know, you self-publish because, like, you know, you're, like, in charge of Marvel. You know, or, or telling, like, Jeff Jarrett, you know, like, when he was in charge of, like, TNA. Oh, well, you booked yourself to be champion. But it's a legit company, you know? So it's just, like, um, it felt good to get that validation in the beginning um, from Mark and Lesser Known Comics that, like, the comic was good enough and it was solid. I mean, we were their best comic when we were there. Like, I have no problem saying that and then now it's like it, it it was the building blocks of you know legacy and um yeah. but yeah 20 years ago to answer your question 20 years ago i knew like this was i i had 10 i wrote out 10 issues of the series um when i was 18 like 10 24 page issues so now like we're at conjury 5 but we were doing these mini comics with lesser known, like these Ashcan six, eight, 10 page comics. So like Conjury four is like our first full 24 page comic. So I'm really like up to like the hmm. stuff that I had when I was an 18 year old kid. I mean, we're only up to like a third of that. And then I've just been fine tuning it over the past 20 years. So wow. it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's pretty wild the way everything turned out. So yes, yeah. always, always a comic. It was kind of interesting when you were telling me about how legacy came about and you're working with the other company. It's kind of like you got your foot in the door this is just from what I'm seeing from my perspective. Um, sure. You got your foot in the door. You saw how it works. And you're like, well, you know, I could do it better. And you did it like yes. that. And it's kind yeah. of like, I guess, the same with your journalism professor. Like, 
you know, yeah, he had this reaction. And then I, I was like, yeah, well, now this is how I'm doing. It, it's like, that's, it's kind of been my poster, my, the, like my blueprint for my entire life. Like I've always, I've always gone into the room and seen who's worked the hardest or who was in charge and said, okay, so how do we do it better than the way that they're doing it? You know, or it's like how I got into voice acting. I mean, I was doing dialogue editing on the survival RPG, uh, the survival action game on Steam that eventually got ported over to PlayStation 4 and Switch and Xbox and stuff. And our voice actor left. And they were like, oh, we're screwed. Like, what are we going to do? And I'm just like, that guy sucked. We could do it better. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm just like, he sounded like Russell Brand. And we're doing a survival horror game. We need somebody with some bass in their voice, somebody that's really scary. And they're like, but we're screwed. The Kickstarter starts in like four days. What are we going to do? And I'm like, just let me audition. I've edited every line of dialogue. Let me do it. And then I ended up doing it. And then we did a sequel. And then that just opened up. I mean, now the big game, I just did uh, BPM Boy on the Atari VCS. And that was a lot of fun. But um, I'm doing the voices of over 100 characters in WrestleQuest, which is coming out like for every like major system it's a japanese rpg with like 30 licensed wrestling characters like from diamond dallas page jake the snake roberts andre the giant wow. so, like i'm doing all those voices but that's again my voice acting my comics my journalism it all came from okay got my foot in the door watching learning keeping my mouth shut and then it's just like but wait mm, no no ooh, that's good like take from the best borrow from the rest make it your own and then just try and be as consistent as possible you know I feel, so. I feel like you need that either like on a t-shirt or like a motivational poster take from the best oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what did i want to bring up okay yeah. well, let's let's talk about country of course i mean yeah. that's, that's why we're here sin city but with a different type of edge even kind of like you mentioned ben is because it look a little bit of a torso feel sure and when you open it it's it's weird it's it's very dark it's very grim looking it's kind of like if you remember the first crow film from the 90s you've, it was always dark and rainy you've kind yeah. of got that and it captures the personality of the area so so well Thank and then you. when you just mentioned um that you, you had an artist who kind of made country look like like cloud it's um it's kind of interesting because the first time that I really saw him, I actually shouldn't say the first time, it was it was the second issue. He's kind of coming out of the. I'm trying not to give too much away. We're just kind of giving out. Yeah, that's okay. Sure. Shadow. The first thing I thought of was um, it looked like a character from like Final Fight, and it's just that Love kind it. of vibe, yeah. like this big hulking kind of thing. But yeah, really, what it reminds me of the most going through, and I and I've read zero through four a couple times now it's very layered you can't just go through it once and pick up on it and it's it's done in a way where it kind of disarms you because you're like okay well i know this which way this is going like hold on a second there's a totally different shift it, it almost reminds me of like watching a scorsese film like uh Huge influence on me too by the way tarantino scorsese yeah. you know yeah absolutely yeah, I, I mean that beginning it felt very much like taxi driver and um, even you're talking you're kind to me. Of, you're talking <laughs> to me. You're, you're kind of always questioning. Okay, is he a hero? Is he a villain? That type of thing. So you mentioned Scorsese is a big influence. What was it exactly that you had in mind? I guess when you started Conjure or, or when you created Conjure. So it's just like um, <sighs> desperation and restraint. If I can kind of like describe his personality, he's desperate to find out, like, not find out. He's desperate for revenge, but he's so much stronger than people think. And it's just like he has to restrain himself every single second of every day. And you know what it is, too? It's like one of my favorite films when I was a kid um, was Highlander. And um, I think of I love Chris Lambert, but I think he's an awful actor. But, like, that character is amazing because that character can kind of kill whoever he wants, whenever he wants. But he's got to, like, maintain, like, his what he thinks his purpose is. And, like, that character is to, to be only one, to be the last one. But, like, with, with Condry, it's just, like, he needs to, like, he wants retribution. But it's, like, he can't put himself in a situation where he's, like, exposed and things like that. So it's just, like, 
He's got to try and outthink people. And it just sucks, too, because he's stronger than pretty much everybody, but he can't show it. And then it's just like, how is somebody like this going to get, like, a day job? Like, he's homeless for a reason, because it's like he can't have a 9-to-5 job. Like, somebody like that cannot have a 9-to-5 job. So it's just like, again, it's just he's desperate. But then at the same time, he's, like, empowered, but he can't show his power. So it's just like this this constant struggle, this constant duality. I just always wanted that to, to show. Um, there's another movie... Um, people may not think of it as like a huge influence, like when they read Conjure, but like, oh, Chasing Amy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that movie. Um, I love Kevin Smith. Um, Guardian Devil, I think, is like one of it's one of my favorite like Daredevil runs. Even though a lot of people shit on the, you know, the Mysterio exposure at the end and blah blah blah. If you haven't read it, I'm sorry for the spoiler. Um, Twenty year old spoiler. You know. <laughs> yes, yes. But there are some people. I guarantee you're going to get at least one comment that's like, "Oh, you spoiled Guardian Devil for me." Blah blah blah. blah. Um, but the whole thing is, it's just like Kevin Smith had you on a ride throughout that entire thing. So you have like Karen's thing with. Uh, with AIDS and then you had the child and then you had Mysterio and then you had all of these like so I love when there's a story where there's like a straight A and B but then there's all these little pit stops along the way and I feel like um if you guys haven't noticed yet like Sarita is getting her own one shot in like two weeks um and that's gonna fill in her entire backstory and um like I've told I've told some people before, but I don't think I've ever said it like super publicly, but like the job is in the same universe as Condry. Beverly um Dero, Dan Dero's wife in the job is going to play a pivotal role in Condry at some point. So it's just like I'm trying to build like the same way like Tarantino would build like characters and build the world and stuff. I'm very much I've always wanted to do that at at some point. So like, to answer your question, yeah, it's just, like, Condry is, like, obviously at the center of it all, but it's just, like, he impacts, like, Brooklyn in so many different ways and forces all of these people to, like, act, or he inspires these people to act. So it's just, like, I wanted this, like, this massive broken vessel of change, like, in the center of a universe. You know, that's kind of, like, what I was going for. Yeah, uh, um, you mentioned the job. I haven't read the job yet. Uh, while I was doing a little bit of research, I did see you talk about the job on another show. I got to say, I know you've got one issue out yet. I haven't read it yet. I'm all in. But It's great. I love it. Tell everybody about it. Sure. So um, I've covered professional wrestling for about 18 years. I've done ring announcing for professional wrestling. I've interviewed, I mean, a who's who of professional wrestlers over the years. I'm Dallas Page, Rey Mysterio, Jeff Jarrett, like Paul Heyman, Dolph Ziggler, like Jim Ross, Chavo Guerrero. Like the list goes on and on. I love professional wrestling. Um, I watch anywhere from like 15 to 20 hours of professional wrestling a week. Um, and it's just like, there's like really like no good wrestling comic books out there. There's a few and like do a power bomb just came out from image and it, that is so good. Um, but the thing is again, to go back to like my love of film um, films like point break and like dog day afternoon um, heat. Like I uh, even to an extent um, oceans 11, I love, like, when banks get robbed in film, it's just, it's amazing, you know? Um, so I was just like, what if I combine, like, professional wrestling with, like, a heist and, and put the two together? So it's just like Dan Dero is your typical jobber in professional wrestling. He loses every match that he wrestles. Um, but he looks like a million bucks. And he's got great uh, in-ring gear. His valet is beautiful. And he's got a great car. And people are always like, but How? And he, he'll just be like, well, I rob banks. And they'll go, what? And he goes, and yeah, I'm just, just just fucking with you. Like, da da da. But he he does. And he's great at it. And his wife his is his valet in wrestling, but she's she's like the brains of the operation. Um, she's an amazing getaway driver. And um, this is like the way that they live their American dream. Like on the surface, he's a shitty wrestler that is the super of a very small building in Brooklyn. So they live very frugally and modestly and stuff like that. And you see them on the street and you're just like, oh, that's that cute little young couple, you know, in like their early 30s, you know, da da da. they kind of keep to themselves and stuff. But it's just like they rob banks. And uh, this is like what they have to do to have their American dream. They want to have children one day. They want to have a house and stuff. But it's just like they don't have the education. They don't have like all these other things that people, you know, other people have. So they have to find their own way. Um so that's that's basically the job but like the the best part about the job which 
people don't know yet, so I'll, I'll expose it on your show. Um, the building that Sarita lives in, Dan is the super of that building. Wow. So, so it's like it's your connected oh, universe. Yeah. That's your connected universe. And um, like I said, they're all going to have some like interaction. And Kieran Quinn um, did the art on uh, the Job Zero. So if you love the art in Condry, you'll love the art in the job. Uh, we have Steve Conjay on the job number one now because, like, I mean, me writing three three scripts at the same time is rough. But, like, imagine having to draw, like, pencil, ink, and color. So, like, we ended up taking Kieran off of the job because Steve Conjay did um, our Dracula book. And it came out fantastic. So I was just like, wrestling is all anatomy. You know, it's all body parts and stuff. And Steve is so good at anatomy. So I'm just like, you would be perfect for wrestling. And he loves wrestling. So, I mean, him and I, we talk like an hour a day. He'll be like, oh, I just finished this page. Let me send it to you. And I'm like, let me see. And I'll be like, oh, the hands are too limp. Oh, the head needs to be up more. We need more expression in the face. Don't just show the back of somebody's head. Da -da -da -da. Like, So we have these intimate, like really like panel by panel discussions. So like, if you love what I'm doing with Condry, you will love the job. See what I what I like, and this kind of everything you explained, uh, and and the the uh, Legacy Comics website, uh, mm -hmm. which again I, I encourage everybody that it's going right across the screen here. Go ahead and visit. <laughs> you could read their books either in print or digital. Uh, mm -hmm. Digital's great; it comes right to your email. Very easy to navigate. Yep. I can attest to that. Um, but again, it, you're showing it's not only a very very much like a work in progress, like you're, t you're showing everybody the steps each step of the way, but it's a very collaborative project. And, you know, when you go to your LCS and you pick up the latest issue of Avengers number 3000 or whatever, uh, you don't get that sense. When you go to a legacy comics and you hear stories like this, you know that this is a, a whole creative team, a whole creative force behind it. It's not a, you said an LLC, but it's not a, a big giant company. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, things, yeah. we're, we're we're five we're five people really. Um, we have one other team that's in North Carolina that are they they're just about two weeks away from debuting their um Ashcan. They're like manga Ashcan with us. Um, called Godfo Universe. Really cool stuff. It's black and white. It's different from a lot of the stuff that we've done so far. But we know that there's like a massive like comic manga hybrid group of uh, readers out there. So we wanted to give them something different. It's done killer for us on pre-order so there's a lot of people that are excited about that but for the most part i mean it's john john and myself are doing like all of the like we pack all the orders i i i send everything i bring everything to the post office like you know john is the one taping everything and stuff like taping the boxes shut and stuff um like i said john uh maintains the back end of the site i update the site all, all every day i update the socials every day we have a new podcast and john John is the host and John edits it and John John manages the um, YouTube and the Vimeo and stuff. So it's just like it's really two guys and then we have like four other creators that are busting their asses for us. So it's a very small company and we're super transparent. We try and do as many podcasts as possible. We try and talk as much as possible on um, social media about what we're doing. And like we're all <laughs> everyone on our team is either married with children or engaged. So just like everyone and everyone has like a nine to five, like I'm a college professor and stuff like that. John is the super of a building. So it's just like we all are. This is a passion project for everyone involved. So like you nailed it right on the head. So I'm happy that you saw that <laughs> on the website, like that you were able to to glean, uh, glean that from the website because it's it's totally yeah. there. I mean, you guys are making me feel lazy. I've got one job. <laughs> I got one job in my basement shooting videos for hoping people watch. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, it's so great as a collaborative project. I've never written a comic. Uh, I've taken a couple classes at the Kubrick School on how to write. And the thing that has kind of, both the teachers I had just kind of came across and said, look, you know, you can't do everything on your own. You can, but you'd go crazy or you're not going to produce as much. You, you have to know how to make friends and you have to know how to leverage, you know, yeah. uh, who you know and what you know. And it, it sounds like you've you've mastered that pretty much. It's hard. I mean, it's like every day, like I, I, I joke around with John all the time because it's like whenever we have to have like a meeting or something like that, we'll, we'll game plan before and before the meeting. Cause like we're speaking to like three or four licensees now about like doing comics based on their properties and stuff like that. And I've been super lucky 
I would say over the last 18 years that I've been under the learning tree of some amazing people. So like with my video game books, I've interviewed like all of the founding fathers of electronic arts, you know? So it's just like, we're talking, these are guys that were negotiating million dollar deals like in the nineties, you know? And before I have to go into a meeting, I'll message one of these guys and go, listen, we're not really sure if we want to do anything with these people, but how do we learn the most from these people in this meeting? How do we use this as a learning experience? Blah, blah, blah. And the guy, the guys and gals will be like, Oh, do this, do this. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, um, we had a meeting like three weeks ago and, um, I called up one of my friends. Her name is Barbara McCaleck. And, um, she did Ren and Stimpy, the little mermaid, um, who framed Roger rabbit for the Sega Genesis in the early nineties. Um, She's one of the smartest people that I've ever met in my entire life. She um, she did World Series Baseball on the Sega Genesis. Like, she's a complete, total rock star. And I'm like, Barbara, this is, this is the meeting that I have. What should I do? And then Barbara's just like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm just like, wow, 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 wow. Okay. And then I go into the meeting, and I just start throwing some of that stuff in there. And, um, like, we killed it. You know, yeah. so it's like if, if I had to go in like by myself, that would be that would be bad. <laughs> you know, that would be and the thing is, I'm not I've got enough experience like over the last 18 years to be able to hold my own, you know, and, I mean, I have three, three college degrees. I'm the head of a journalism program, you know, like but having these people that have lost a lot of money and made a lot of money in various different fields, like being able to pick their brains has made a tremendous difference. And like, if you, if you tell any first year comic book company, oh, you're going to publish at the least 11 books in your first year, they'll go, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and not lose any money. So like, that's like, so far, like I go to John every day. I'm like, man, we have not lost any money. And we're about to like publish three more books. We published 11 books. We published variants. We published a hologram cover. And we have not lost any money. We haven't made a lot of money, but we haven't lost a dime. We don't need an angel investor. We don't have to go to Kickstarter again. But it's just like, because we've just taken things like, we're, we're almost like Vulcan, you know, incredibly like just or slow, organic build, being logical, being real with each other and being like, oh man, we would love to get this artist. But this artist is going to cost a ton of money. And this artist isn't going to push our book and make us the money back. So you know what? can't work with this artist but what about this artist this artist is hungry they push themselves like da, da, da. so it's just like it's like building a baseball team or a, a professional sports team from scratch you need role players you need to put people in the right spaces and it's just it's taken it's taken a lot of time and effort from you know john and i behind the scenes but like we've we've put together a solid team so i, I hope that yeah. hope that answers your question <laughs> <laughs> i think so you, you basically you went in you punk rocked it and yeah oh it. yeah it's so funny because it's like um oh you just reminded me of a conversation i had a i had a conversation with a student probably like four years ago and i used to have really long hair a tongue ring i used to wear like the akuma bull chain and stuff i was totally like your <laughs> your average punker kid and um i was just trying to explain to these journalism students that like you're going to change like the way you look is going to change but your attitude and your work ethic that's going to stay the same like, you can't just flip a switch and be like, I'm going to be a hustler. Like, you have to have it within you. You have to flip the switch yourself. And then, you know, and um, I showed them the picture of me. And they're like, oh, you sold out. You conformed, blah, blah, blah. And I was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, but I'm punk inside. And I tried to explain yeah. to them that, like, that punk nature, that DIY, using no way as way, you know, making opportunities for yourself, making friends, helping people, being loyal. That's, like, that's punk 101, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just like, even though... I'm a college professor and a dad and a husband and I don't have a tongue ring anymore and my hair is short shorter in some places than others. <laughs> I'm still like punk inside and I will be punk inside forever, you know? So it's just like, yeah, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. Wow. Well, so I, I got to ask now, I only found about your company through um, actually Steve Conje. I, I don't know him personally. I just know him from occasionally he jumps on Reggie collects yeah. Um, how do you get your product out there? I mean, I know it's not something that you see like in a diamond catalog, but sure. how are you distributing? So right now um, we're doing everything on our, on our website. 
Um, we've had signings in about four different comic book stores in the Northeast. Um, we've done some small cons. I'm doing Zolo Con in Pennsylvania, um, July 23rd and 24th. I'm actually I'm one of the hosts of the event because of like my video game background. So I'm gonna like help them out with the Miss Pac-Man tournament. But like Legacy is gonna be out there in full effect. We're gonna have a table. We're gonna sell all of our books and stuff. So. Um, like I said, I've been super lucky to be able to like leverage my popularity and my my reputation in the video game world and in voice acting and stuff into the comic book scene. So that's that's helped us a lot. But like as of right now, we're on we're on Comixology, we're on Amazon, and we're on our official site. And then it's just us pumping socials. So the thing is, it's just like I would love for us to be in a local comic book store. Um, but the thing is, it's just like a local comic book store is going to want to wholesale our product, and which is fine. But then that's severely hurting like our bottom line. We can make a lot more money if we sell direct on our website. Um, we're not going to sell as much as fast, but it's like, again, that slow, organic build. I would much rather hold on to like one of our comics for like two weeks and sell it to someone that we reached grassroots like through a podcast like you or through another creator or something like that. I would much rather do that than sell our book to a comic book store and make half as much as we would have made. Because the thing is like, once we give the book to the comic book store, the comic book store, they sell it. There's no, there's no interaction. You know, um, I love being able to like meet people at cons and meet people at signings and sell our books to them. Eventually, like when we can get our print numbers up, and our, our cuz like right now we're printing around 500 copies of every comic for each run um when we can get it up to a higher number then i would absolutely love to be in diamond and in comic book stores but for like right now it's like we've got to have that punk you know style we've got to yeah. be diy we've got to pump social media all the time because the thing is if you can't sell out a print run of 500 you don't deserve to print a thousand you don't deserve to be in a local comic book store you know so it's just like i'll give you another like perfect example um, we did a signing at a comic book store like a month ago and I walked into the comic book store and I was like, we're going to do a signing with you guys. And he was like, what? I'm like, this is what we're going to do. And he, he was like, listen, I've got plenty of like indie comic books here. They don't sell. They just sit here. Like, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. I'm like, I don't want you to hold my product. I'm like, because your shelf space is money to you and I don't want to take up your shelf space. This is what I want to do. I'm like, I want to come in. I want to do a signing. I want to uh publicize the signing for like a month i want to try and fill your store with as many people as possible we'll stay here for like three hours we'll sell as many books as we possibly can we'll cut you in at a percentage of what we make and you're basically going to get paid just for us renting out a table for for the time wow. so what happens is people come in the store that are normally going to come into the store at that time or we bring people people come into the store because they've seen the the promotion on social media and the comic book store makes money and we make money instead of like us giving the comic book store, you know, 50 copies and, and hoping and praying that we sell books. It's just like that stuff doesn't work anymore. Yeah. You know, like if you, you've got to be in people's faces, you've got to use social media, you've got to like do as many different things as possible. So it's just like for, for an indie company, us being like being so young, us being in Diamond and in the comic book store isn't going to help us as much as like if every single person that works for Legacy pumps their socials um, and works their asses off on their product and believes in it and shares it on social media, like you're going to just build this like impenetrable, you know, pyramid and the word of mouth is going to be strong. So it's just like, and then Diamond takes money, you know, it's just like, why give people money? Yeah. Like, when if you just bust your ass you could just have it all for yourself you know do you find so. yourself uh, i should say what do you how do you find people prefer to buy it is it more print more digital are they about even uh i would say more physical at this point um a lot of the people it's funny because it's just like um i post in a lot of facebook um like comic book groups and um <laughs> These are like my favorite readers in the world. These are the people I'm sure I'm sure you know these people that buy two copies. And they buy one reader copy and then they slab the other and they have like tons of slab books. You know? So it's just like the, these are the people that for the most part we've run into. Um, we had somebody the, the other day I and mean, we just posted a picture on Instagram. He ordered five copies of Dracula of uh, Renfield Visions of Madness. Um 
And I was like, wow, I've never bought five copies of any one comic in my entire life. You know, maybe two, or maybe like if I lost it as a kid and I found it again, oh my God, I got to pick this up, blah, blah, blah. But those are like the types of people that we've run into so far. Um, digital sales have been solid. They've been very good. Um, but yeah, like we've done, we've done our best so far at like signings and with these little cons, the site has been doing great too. Like we get orders every day. Um, but yeah, so far it's just like after a podcast, the next day we usually get a nice, a nice, uh, chunk of orders and stuff, but like not for, for me, nothing beats like doing a panel, doing a podcast, talking about it and then getting people excited for it. And then they come organically to the site or, or they meet us at a signing and they, they, they get copies. You're kind of like your own Stanley. You create it, you write it, you, you pitch it, you promote it. <laughs> yeah, you have to. And so I've tried to explain, cause every person that signs with us, um, I've written out probably like a 15 page social media, like manual. And, um, I'm like, just follow this. Like my wife is an entrepreneur too. She does her own, like, uh, she sells jewelry. She, she, uh, hand paints, uh, nails. Like she's amazing. And like, uh, she promotes the shit out of her business. You know, she believes in her business. She's passionate about it. And it's just like, I tell people, if you're passionate, you, if you're passionate and you have a high quality product, you never feel like you're pandering. You never feel that like you're begging, you know? So, and it's just like, you're building a brand because when people like, when people buy Condry, they're buying like a piece of me, you know? So it's just like, if they don't believe in me, if they don't believe in my hustle, if they don't like feel like connected to me in, in a, a tiny way, they're probably not going to want to buy the comic. You know, so the thing is, it's like I try and express that to all of our creators. And it's funny to me because it's just like of our eight books, like the top four are by the people that push their shit the hardest. You know, it's just like you can't just like do a book and just go, oh, let's see if it sells because it's not going to. You know, it's like for my for my video game books. I mean, I've been do I've done easily 75 podcasts a year at least for the past six years, just on those books, you know? Wow. And then like for the comic books, I mean, since, since we launched in like November, I've probably done like 40 podcasts. So it's just like, you've got to push it. You know I mean? We, I have a reader um, in Germany that's bought like all of the Condries digital and he bought like one, two, three, and four. And he messages me and he's just like, Oh, it's so good. I'm like, you know, we have a zero issue. Right. And he goes, Oh my God, I had no idea. <laughs> he ordered it. And I'm just like, and this is somebody that I just met on, Facebook in a comic book group and we started talking back and forth and I'll tell the team interact with people when people comment on your stuff and they're like I love your art if you don't comment back to them like you're just walking away from a connection that you could have with somebody and that's what I'm about I'm about having as many connections with people as possible and if, if you're a creator a lot of creators are very much like oh well I don't want to be famous and I don't I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that and it's just like if people are going to connect with your art, you owe it to them to try and connect back with them. So that's like, yeah. that's what I try and instill within every person on the team with mixed results so far, but <laughs> you know, we'll see. I mean, well, you've had Condry, as you said, and really written out, planned out since you're 18 years old. So you've got yeah. that passion going back all the way from high school yeah. going on this. So now it's time to, I guess, just release that. Absolutely. Uh, it's been crazy too, because it's like, from 18 to 38, it's like college, girlfriends, bands, journalism. I mean, I, I, I covered um, the Sundance Film Festival, Tribeca, Comic-Con. Like I told you, I worked for NBC. And it was just like every like couple of years, it would be like, Condry's right there. And I would go and try and find another artist. Or I, I would work on it during my lunch break and tighten up the narrative and stuff like that. And then I just got to the point. It was like my daughter getting ready to be born forced me to become an author because I was like, I'm not going to be one of those dads that just like, Oh, I could have did this. I could have did that. But then I had kids. So I'm like the first book I had to do at least the first book for my daughter to say, you know what? Yeah. Your dad's a journalist, but he's also an author. And then it's just like, that stuff was doing so good. And that led into the voice acting. And then I'm just like, gotta, gotta try and do something with this character or else I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And I'm just so, I'm so happy that I you, did. You've said that um, you've got, volumes of stories to go on country what what's your i guess without giving out any secrets or spoilers or everything what what is where do you want to see country let's say in in five years ten years where what's your big plan i guess with country um 
multiple multiple uh, villains at some point. Obviously, so obviously we just have like the first arc or two or three is going to be like the Lopez gang, you know. But um, I want it to bridge out to a whole bunch of other things. That's why, like I told you, like the job is connected, and there's going to be other stories that are connected in this net. And like, um, I'm sure you've seen already. Sarita is not just some like little old lady. Yeah, she can t- she can totally take care of herself. Um, she's definitely like anyone that's like that's loved Condry so far. I, all I'm gonna say, and this is not to toot my own horn or anything, but it's just like. Um, this Sarita one shot is probably the reason why I decided to leave lesser known comics because well, you saw I, already... me now I gotta go read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out in like two weeks. It's available for pre-order digitally and physically um, on, on legacycomics.com. But what happened was um, like, we were like the killer book at the time. And I went to, to Mark and I was just like, listen, people are really digging Sarita and I have a really like great backstory for her. Um, I want to flesh it out a little bit, but I would love to do it as a one shot. And the answer was just kind of like, and I was just like, (laughs) okay. So I remember I was putting my son to bed one night and and he had just fallen asleep and I was just like super comfortable. I'm sure you've been there before where you're just like, you're laying and you're looking at your phone and your kid's asleep and you're just like, I could either fall asleep now or I can try and get some work done. So you shut the brightness off on your phone and you start typing away with one hand. And I, I literally wrote the entire script of Sarita while holding my, my son while he wow. was sleeping. And uh, it's one of the best things that I've ever written. And it's just like, um, by the time that's over, if you don't, and it's this is why you mentioned Tarantino before. It's like you and I, we must have Vulcan mind melded before this podcast. <laughs> but it's just like, if you, if you read like Condry Zero, and then you read Sarita, the Sarita one shot. They they work perfectly into Conjury one. So like how Conjury one starts off, where we meet Sarita at the supermarket. Sarita's one shot ends when she goes to the supermarket. Wow. So it's just like everything just like comes perfectly together. So I just knew I wasn't going to be able to tell stories like that at lesser known. So that's why like one of the reasons why I had to start Legacy. So to answer your question, like five years from now. Um, I would love to to blend like the job and Condry some more. Um, the job is going to be a lot of fun. Like I already have multiple. I have like the whole first six issues of the job written out. I have ideas for like the next arc after that. So my whole thing is like I just want to continue to tell stories. Um, I've been talking to a couple of video game companies um, about doing a Condry video game, very much in the. Um, the vein of like a Streets of Rage or like Final Fight, you know. Um, so there's that. Um, we also produced like a Conjury motion comic, which is basically like Conjury Zero. We haven't released it yet, but it's done, and I play the voice of Conjury in there and stuff. So it's just like I want to do a lot of mixed media. I really love this character. I think this character is really special. Um, I just want to continue to tell his story over the next like five, ten years. Yeah, I would love like for me. Getting Conjury Zero out was super important. That was like check, you know. And now it's like I totally would love to get to like issue ten. And then when I get to issue ten, I would love to get to issue like twenty five. And then like one of my favorite comics as a kid, and it's so bad, but it's so good at the same time. Like Dark Hawk, I loved Dark Hawk when I was a kid. It was so bad, but I still read it every month. And I remember when it shut down, it was like issue like forty nine or something like that. So it's just like if I can get to like one more issue than Dark Hawk. <laughs> I would be super happy, you know, or like, you know, I loved, um, the Dan catch, um, Ghost Rider. It was like volume two and I, that mm-hmm. didn't have many issues either. So it's just like, if, if one day I could have more issues than like the Dan catch run of Ghost Rider or dark Hawk, I would be completely happy. Yeah. So. And you, you say, oh, dark Hawk was so bad, but back in the day, that's what we had. It was like, oh yeah, dark Hawk is the best. Yeah. And even now, how many times have you heard, I be, maybe not so much now, but the past two Guardian movies are coming out. Oh, Darkhawk's totally going to be in this. You got to go buy the book. <laughs> yep, that's crazy, but and that's see, a big part of like the legacy thing because like we were all products of like the late '80s, early '90s. Those were the comics that we grew up on, and I think Condry has a lot of that in it in its DNA. Um, I mean, it's the reason why we named the company Legacy. You know, we looked at like you know mid. Um, early mid 90s DC Marvel and obviously the formation of Image 
um, and the really sexy stuff of Dark Horse, uh, Dark Horse, like the Predator comics and um, Sin City and stuff like that back in the day, as like our fuel to like build the company. So, and, and now you just mentioned Image too, because that was kind of the the feeling I had looking at Conjury, like early Spawn. Yeah, but um, I think he's more layered than Spawn. You know, he's again yeah. like I've I've said, and I'm not giving too much away. There's a lot of duality with with uh, Conjury and with Sarita. You're going from dark times to light times to back to dark times to really dark times, and it, it's just something very unique. And I think it shows uh, a lot of maturity and a lot of thought about these characters. But uh, it, it's kind of interesting because you mentioned, well, here's the video game. Um, you know, we're we're talking to in the motion comic, so potentially you can have the comic you created go into the video game based on the comic you created and then maybe the book about the making about the video game about the comic you created it's wild it's wild but those are the hopes you know and um the work is being put in like every single day you know um i would love one day for Condry to be a monthly comic i would love for us to be a monthly comic book publisher but it's just like it's so expensive to print comics. So like right now we're basically a quarterly company. Hmm. Um, so it's hard, you know. But um, that's why it's so important. We're like, I mean, hearing you talk about the comic um, feels great because it's just like if more people read it and more people bought it, then we would be able to get stuff out faster and things like that, you know. So it's just like it's a it's it's building blocks. It's hard, you know. It's so hard for me to sit down. And have you tell me, oh, you like this, you like that. And then I'm just like, I already have Conjury 5 written. <laughs> like, like all the stuff you're saying is so true. But there's like two more characters in the next comic that like when you meet them, you're going to love them. You know, it's just like that's like I want to just like jump up for joy and be like, you guys love this. Just like and that's the thing with support. You can buy the comics, but also, too, it's just like sharing things on social media. Super, super important. It's like I tell people all the time. I have friends that they'll go in. And they'll go on the legacy page on Instagram or Facebook and they'll just like 50 posts. And I'm like, that does nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, like retweet, share the story, you know, like those organic story shares, those organic retweets, those organic, you know, shares into other groups and stuff like that. That stuff is free, but like is so important in like sharing someone's someone's vision. So it's just like, yeah, man, like it's hard. It's hard when you have a product that you like completely believe in and you know that it's good, but it's still growing. You know, I mean, because bottom line is, I mean, we didn't get the money from the Kickstarter until like January. So like we're still like a five month. When you think about it, we're still like a five month old company that's released like eight comics. That's pretty wild, you know. Yeah. So it's just it's it's hard but it's like exhilarating at the same time like i've been so stressed but happy and pissed off like i am literally like creamer from seinfeld every day like i am just like happy sad all over the place like have all my shit together have don't have it together the next and it's just like it's been a complete roller coaster but like in the best way possible because like i have more control than i had with lesser known like lesser known we had a we had a tiny little print run of like 180 comics and like their business model was to basically give everything away you know and i would and every time we would do a signing and we would give away all these comics people like how much are these and people wanted to pay for them and um so like when we did the kickstarter and i got funded in like three and a half hours it was basically like um it was validation you yeah. know it was just like looking at all those people that i had left and been like see i told you people would pay for these told you that they were good enough you know um and now it's just like now we got to just get to more people you know yeah so and paying is receiving money is the difference between being a hobbyist and you know being an entrepreneur absolutely yeah. you know and it's like i've had these conversations with people on the team before uh, um where it's just like listen we are and that's the thing like i again like i told you i've learned a lot from people that i've worked with like but i mean I have, I, I just sent in my seventh manuscript. Like my, my publisher is like one of the biggest academic nonfiction publishers, like in the world, McFarlane and company. Like if you look them up, like they've published tons and tons of, of books of people and stuff. And um, I try and follow their 
like business model like follow our lead like it, it's just like if somebody starts to like go rogue on me i'm gonna be like you signed a contract with us like you trusted us to do this like trust the process you know and it's just it's hard especially like when you have a young creator that's just like how come we haven't gotten any like pre-orders today blah, blah, blah. and it's just like because every time you post on social media you're just selling show them a picture of your kid watching you draw sh sh or just show them a picture of your kid or Take a picture with a cup of coffee. Like, show them a real person. If you're constantly selling all the time, people aren't going to want to buy, you know? And it's just, like, it's a hard... It's hard for an artist that thinks it's just about the art, but it's so not now. You know, it's like reality yeah. TV. Like, reality TV <laughs> ruined... It ruined, like, comics. It ruined film. Like, because now, before, it was just, like, you didn't have to, like, Scorsese the person to, like, buy one of his movies. But now, like, with all these documentaries and, like, VH1 Behind the Music and ESPN 30 for 30 and Real Housewives of, like, you know, Kentucky or whatever state they're doing this, like, you have to not only like their art, but you have to like them as a person. So now it's your job to go on social media and create a brand that people want to buy into you. And it's just, like, a lot of artists and a lot of indie artists just don't. They don't. Artists and writers don't don't get it. So it's just, like, it, yeah. that. this is one of the reasons why we... You know, John started the podcast. Why well, I go on as many podcasts as possible as possible because it's just like you got to show people like what you're all about. You know, to get them hyped. Yeah. And just you? a reminder again, I've got it crawling at the bottom of the screen, but I'm also going to put a link in the description to this video uh, for Legacy Comics, um, Pat, for, for your company as well. And and you know, give me the link to the YouTube. I'll, I'll plug it there as well. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to also do a giveaway where I'm going to be giving the Conjury issues zero to four uh, to one of my watchers here. So make sure when you, one of the viewers, I should say this video here. So make sure you're watching this to the very end to find out how you could win a copy, but more importantly, go and buy it, you know, support these guys. And just as Pat said, share some information about it. This is, um, you know, again, I could say we've been talking a lot about Conjury. I could tell you it's the kind of story that once you think you know what's going on, it totally surprises you. There was even a little detail in the latest issue with the villain, just one little panel that made me say, okay, th this is different. This is different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot about Conjure. We've talked a little bit about the job. We've talked a lot about Legacy Comics. Um, Pat, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, um, we have a bunch of other books. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Renfield, Visions of Madness, which is actually um, fully endorsed by the Bram Stoker estate. So um, Renfield, Visions of Madness is the only um, comic that I know of that is written off of Bram Stoker's original unpublished notes of Dracula. So it's an official Dracula prequel comic. Um so that's one. That's one of our books. Uh, Legend of the Night Owl. One. I actually have that oh, one coming to me. <laughs> nice. I read that one today. There you go. Awesome, man. Um, so um, then we have The Legend of the Night Owl by um, Afram Jean Belay, and it's also drawn by Kieran Quinn. Um, Afram Jean Belay is a actor and a stuntman. He's been on like Daredevil, Law and Order. Like he's a third degree black belt in Shotokan. He's a wonderful actor. We went to high school together. Um, and he saw Condry and was like, bro, I got an idea for a comic. And um, I uh, kind of told him, let's hold off a little bit because I was at Lesser Known at the time. I was like, let's hold off a little bit. I'm doing something. And he was like, he was the first writer that I brought into the company besides myself. Um, if you like the dirty Brooklyn noir that is um, Condry, you will definitely be a fan of Legend of the Night Owl. It's very gritty. Um and I don't want to give too much away, but it's kind of like if you married like the Streets of Rage video game with the Warriors movie. That's kind of like what's going on, and wow. it it takes place in Brooklyn. Um, Kieran Quinn's art in it is fantastic. Um, so that's Legend of the Night Owl. Then we have Kroom, uh, K R O O M, which is actually based off of an indie video game that I wrote the story for. That's still in development. COVID kind of like killed it. But the animator for Kroom is P. Paul Kett, and he was a senior senior animator for Bioshock Infinite. So um, mm. it's definitely got like a good pedigree. Um, it's going to be a six issue miniseries, and um, it's a six issue miniseries because it represents each issue represents an, a, a level of the game. 
So every issue is going to end in like a boss fight. It's going to be super oh. fun, super <laughs> old school. Um, so that's Kroom. Um, then we have John Svedesi's baby, um, which is Athos, which um, if you like Invincible, I think you'll like Athos because it's kind of like, imagine if like the superhero that's uh, designed to like save the planet goes like absolutely batshit crazy. You know, like that's kind of like if I could sum up Athos in like, you know, a sentence, that's basically like what's going on with it. It's got a really good design. We got um, LeBeau Underwood, who's a pretty big time inker in comics. He just did um, the patch um, run for Marvel. Um, mm -hmm. He inked the cover uh, for Athos Zero. It's a really pretty cover. Um, so I said Athos, Kroom, Legend of the Night Owl, The Job, Condry. Um, Renfield you had in there. And Renfield. Yeah. And then um, then in, in two weeks, we have the Sarita one-shot coming out, which is Sarita's full backstory, 24 pages. Like, oh, like I said, this may be like the best work of fiction that I've written to this to this day. I, I super, like, I always say, like, my last issue is the best, but it's just, like, the Sarita one-shot, like, the artist on it, um, Joshua, um, oh, my God. Like, there were times when he was like, <laughs> bro, bro. And I'm like, yeah, man, like it hits, it hits super hard. So we know like if you've read Condry one that like Sarita has gone through a lot, you know, um, but now you get to see it. You get to see how everything happened um, and what made her the woman that she is. It's, it's awesome stuff. And then, um, like I said, Godfo, um, which Joshua Adams, who did the work on Sarita, he's the artist for Godfo. Cause what happened was, I mean, he just nailed the art for Sarita and he was just like, oh, I got this idea for an Ashkin that we that we would want to do into like a graphic novel. Um, blah, blah, blah. No, he said he had a graphic novel idea. And I said, let's do an Ashcan first. Let's see, like, you know. And um it's done it's done great in pre-order so far. It's just this really sexy black and white, like futuristic, like manga, um, that I think a lot of people will really like. It hits really hard, and by the time it's over, you're just like, Yeah, I need more of this. So those those are our eight books. We've got like something pretty much for everyone so yeah so that's no matter what you like legacy comics has it i highly encourage you again after this video go on to the site whether you do digital physical or both definitely check these guys out pat i, I want to thank you for coming on your enthusiasm is just oozing through my phone right now <laughs> uh, i'm ready thank to you. jump on this site right now too and just get more <laughs> but, thank you uh, man it means a lot Thank you again for coming on it and best yeah. of luck. And again, stay tuned and I'm going to tell you how you could win a few copies of Conjury for yourself. Thanks again, Pat. No problem, man. I hope that you enjoyed this interview with Pat Hickey Jr. As much as I enjoyed speaking to him, uh, I found him to be a really interesting guy. And having read all of the available issues of Conjury, I can tell you uh, it's definitely something special and it's something unexpected. And it's not your typical you know, superhero fair, or anything like that. Um, I would try to describe it to you, but I feel like I'd either be giving away too much or I'd be misrepresenting it. Uh, so as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to give you the opportunity to win digital copies of Conjury issues zero through four. That's all of the issues that's available now. Uh, well, all you're going to have to do for it, very simple. Leave a comment on this video and put the hashtag legacy. Your comment can be anything. Well, almost anything. Let's be nice here. <laughs> um, again, leave your comment, hashtag legacy. And then on next week's video, I'm going to announce the winner. And again, the winner's going to get Condry issues 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 on me. In the meantime, I do encourage you to check out Legacy Comics. That's comic spelled C-O-M-I-X. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link in the description. I think it's easier that way uh, because they have a number of great projects. And to be honest with you, there's something for everybody there no matter what you're with that i want to thank you for checking out this video today and for checking out my channel if it's your first time here go ahead and hit that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up and of course leave a comment remember to leave that hashtag legacy for your chance to win five comics on me thanks again for watching enjoy the rest of your day your evening your week your weekend whatever you're watching this peace love and comics take care